on the last week of step 12 as we are completing the journey tonight. We are so grateful for that. I want us to turn to 1 Peter chapter 4. We're going to talk about the narrow road. And it is a very narrow road. You were going to be on page um, 1617. <laughs> so just hold your finger there. I want to share something with you before we get going on that scripture. As we maintain our spirituality and persist in recovery by working the 12 steps, we find benefits that were not obtainable before. In the midst of addictive behaviors and substances, our lives may have seemed to wander meaninglessly, but now they, they are filled with purpose and direction. We learn that we can be content with the conditions set before us. We learn that we can accept and handle tragedy and stress with serenity and courage. All right. We learn to appropriately connect to our loved ones and seek to live well with everyone we encounter, meeting them with compassion, grace, mercy, and acceptance. We learn that our relationship with God is the key to all these tremendous gifts of recovery and that an attitude of gratitude is the salve to any irritability or emotional disturbance. We begin to see that the basis of life is partnership with God and people. Our short-sighted purposes for our lives begin to fade as we realize that with God's help, we can conquer our fatal sin nature and our addictions. The miracle of this partnership with God is so awe-inspiring that we are encouraged to continue recovery no matter how odorous it may be. We realize that the material worldly success pales in comparison to living vitally and purposefully, for sure. True ambition is not what we thought it was. True ambition is the deep desire to live usefully and walk humbly under the grace and mercy of God. So when I, I know for me, getting into the recovery process the material world does not really do anything for me. Or like and me and my wife, when we say, well, everything that we used to like to do, like we don't care to do anymore. It's like, it doesn't do anything for me. So I don't need to see any of that. I don't need to see trees, water, and woods anywhere else but here. So I don't have to go everywhere to see that. It, it, it just doesn't satisfy. The only thing that satisfies us is when we get together here and we do spiritual things <laughs> with the Bible. That's the only thing that I live for now. And it's so much more fulfilling, and it, it doesn't cost anything. It's crazy. Before, I had to have everything, want everything, want to do everything in the flesh. Now my flesh is dying. It doesn't want all that stuff anymore. It want, you know, I can just be content, just relaxing. Something that I could never do before. I always felt like I had to be doing something. And it just feels so much freeing that I, I don't have to like always be running around and making plans to do something and just enjoying life as it comes at me. Like this is this is enjoyment to me right now. Coming here, sharing God's word, being with my brothers and sisters, this fulfills me better than anything else. Going out, clubbing, doing all that crazy stuff I used to do, and there's no, there's no sorrows added to it when I leave here. There's satisfaction here. When you leave here, you feel good. That you didn't do anything that was negative or inappropriate. So you go home and you put your head on the pillow with a clean conscience. That's what recovery is all about. So I'm just so grateful that we can continue to do this. And, you know, I, I, we're just blessed. I know I'm blessed to continue doing this. I mean, we've been doing it for so long now. It's part of my life. I can't, I can't picture not doing this, you know, especially on a Monday. Because Mondays are, like, tough, especially in the work world and everywhere else in the world. It's like Mondays are tough. Come here on Monday, get refueled. Then we go to come to Bible study on Wednesday, get jacked up again, right? For the rest of the week. And it's just a beautiful thing. The heck with all that other stuff. 
and I get the fellowship with my brothers and sisters that love Jesus because I can't even talk about Jesus anymore out there people don't want to hear it as a matter of fact they mock it you know so the only thing I can do is, is, is become like Jesus and keep my mouth shut and keep working and just show show Christ no matter what if you can't talk about him you're going to be like him that's all there is to it all right let's go to um step 12 the narrow road you know all, all i could hope for is that more people would jump in on this and that's all we ever pray for that everybody needs to be recovering from sin all right the narrow road having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps we try to carry this message to others and to practice these principles in all our affairs. We probably came into recovery because we had enough. We had enough of the pain, the lies, and the destruction that resulted from our addictive behavior. One day at a time, we learned the principles on the road to recovery. Now we are at a place we weren't sure we could ever reach. Step 12. Now we are encouraged to share the message with others even though not everyone will welcome it. Peter pointed out, you have had enough of the past, of the evil things that godless people enjoy, their immorality, their lust, their feasting and drunkenness, and wild parties. Of course, your former friends are surprised when you no longer plunge into the flood of wild and destructive things. They do, so they slander you. First Peter 4, 3, 4. 2,000 years ago, they tell you exactly what they do to you now. Yeah. You don't party anymore. You don't do all that stuff. Yeah. They, they slander you. Oh, you're, oh, no, you're holier than thou. You don't do this, that. And they just, because you shine light on them, they want to they they tear you down. Yeah. Because there is a better way. The way. The way. Yeah. We don't always have to be doing things to, to make people like us. Our message won't be accepted by the masses. Tell me about it. We already know this. The people on the highway to hell won't eagerly restrict themselves to the clearly defined steps on the road to recovery. But for those who do listen, our story could be the difference between life and death for them. Because there are people that want this. There are people that want this. And the, people, the message goes out beyond the four walls. We don't even know who this touches. A lot of people get touched by these messages, and it's like, and it's, and it's amazing. You know, when we get to be with, go home to be with the Lord, we're going to see it. You know, well done, my good and faithful servant. Because everything we do for spiritual things for Jesus, oh, we're going to see it when we go to heaven. Everything we do down here gets burnt up, and you'll never remember it again. <clears throat> but everything we do here stays with us when we go up there. It's going to be beautiful. Just imagine somebody walking up to you after we get to heaven. Hey, remember when you gave a message back in 19, uh, two, 2020? I heard you back then, and I started to believe. And here I am now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for talking about Jesus. Thank you for sharing that. You see, people don't understand the whole picture. God does. He sees it. He says, when I send my word out, it always produces something. Somebody will find salvation through the word of God. That's why we have to become the Word of God. So people can find salvation. All right, let's read chapter 4. This is an awesome thing. <coughs> Living for God. And when we come to step 12, this is, this is what step 12 is. Not living for yourself anymore, living for God. That's what this is. You live for God now. You don't live for yourself and what you want. You live for God and for what He wants. So then, since Christ suffered physical pain, you must arm yourselves with the same attitude he had and be ready to suffer too. Boy, you don't hear that getting preached in Bible in church, do you? It doesn't tell you you're going to suffer. It doesn't tell you you're going to have to... It's a hard road once you get on it. But Jesus will get you through. They don't teach these things in church. So when these things get hard, people walk away from God or blame them. It says you must arm yourself with the same attitude he had and be ready to suffer too. For if you have suffered physically for Christ, you have finished with sin. See, when you're done, when you're done with your sins, 
then you know when you're done, God can help you. When you're not done with your sins, God will not help you. When you're done, He will help you. Can I get an amen here? You can say that I'm done, but still want it. He won't stop you from doing it. But if you're really done and don't want it anymore, He will help you not to do it anymore. How about a big amen there? <clears throat> he knows your heart. You won't, look at verse, um, verse 2. You won't spend the rest of your life chasing your own desires. But you will be anxious to do the will of God. Step 12 is becoming anxious to do God's will, not yours anymore. You'll be anxious to do the will of God. You've had enough in the past <clears throat> of the evil things that godless people enjoy. Their immor immorality and lust. What's in the world right now? Sexual immorality and lust. Right? They're feasting, right? Gluttony. And what else? Drunkenness. This is the... Rhode Island is the most... The, dr the drunkest people in the, in the country. You know that, number one? There's like three quarters of the state is drunk. Alcoholics. In Rhode Island. That's why when COVID came, they made the liquor store stay open and closed the churches. That's how sick it is. That's how sick it is. And all these things are going on in this country right now. Immorality, lust, it's all being accepted now though. Before it used to be shunned. Now immorality, not being married and just having sex is accepted. Before it wasn't, now it is, right? And, and what, feasting and drunkenness, that's all accepted. Wild parties everywhere, all the time. In their terrible worship of idols. Now here it is. Of course your former friends are surprised when you no longer plunge into the flood of wild and destructive things they do. So they slander you. Right? So they slander you. How? <laughs> That's what they do. Because we don't do it anymore. Where you going tonight? Church. I'm going to church. Church. <laughs> some, some, it's, fu it's funny how some Christians are afraid to say that because they don't want their friends not to like them. So they won't talk about God because they still like what they like to do, you see? See, once you get out of that, you could care less what people think. I'm going to church and I'm glad I am. And I'll be waiting when you get here too. Yep. I told the girl you don't get no peace out there. Nah, there's no peace out in the world. <laughs> I love to be in church. <laughs> I could live here. Yeah. It's not because God's going to be in the excitement church one day. Because I So they see religion. Yes. No, I'm going because I want to go. I want to go, exactly. And believe me, if you have a job, they can never stop you from doing yes. your, your religion. Yes. You say, this is what I do. I mean, I got a contract at my shop. Yes. I have to be here Monday, yes. Wednesday. I can't work overtime. It's in the contract. Yes. I already put that in stipulation with my job. And they can't fire you for that. Yes. So you put it in there. They can't fire you for religious purposes. <clears throat> now, nah, look what it says. So they slander you, verse 5. But remember that they will have to face God, who will judge everyone, both the living and the dead. That is why the good news was preached to those who are now dead. So also, they were destined to die like all people. They now live forever with God in the Spirit. The end of the world is coming soon. Listen to what it says. This is not no and this is no coincidence why I'm reading this tonight. Pay attention. The world, the internet, whatever. The end of the world is coming soon. Therefore, be earnest and disciplined in your prayers. One thing Christians are not is disciplined and earnest in their Bible study, in their prayers. They don't put it first. They're not disciplined enough to do it 
That's why we do this structured group. So you get disciplined and structured so you can what? Live your spiritual life successfully. Without discipline and structure, the Bible says we all fall, fail. We need it. We don't have to have it. We need it. Look what it says. Most important of all, continue to show deep love for each other. For love covers a multitude of sin. You realize just loving people covers sin? Because love doesn't sin. Because Jesus, God is love. God doesn't sin, neither does love. Because love does no wrong to anybody. Hate does it. We got to transfer from what? Hate to love. Now look what it says. Cheerfully share your home with those who need a meal or a place to stay. <laughs> God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well and serve one another. Do you have the gift of speaking? Then speak as though God himself was speaking through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Do with all the strength and energy that God supplies then everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ and all glory and power to Him forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> all of us have gifts. We're supposed to serve each other in the church. People come to church, boom, and they're out the door in 10 minutes. They don't even stick around to see what a need might be. If somebody needs to do something or something might help out in the church after the church is over. I don't know. I don't know if anybody knows, but we stay here for at least another hour, an hour and a half before we close up. Yeah. Make sure everything's done around here. People just come in, out the door they go. Like everything's catered to. And nobody make, never says raises a hand. Hey, pastors, you need some help doing something. Can there's a way I can help before we leave? Do you need the trash emptied or maybe something? Can I help make it a little bit easier for you? It's the hot. It's a hot problem. <clears throat> Everybody's consumed with themselves. Suffering for being a Christian. Dear friends, don't be surprised at the fiery trials you are going through. As if something strange were happening to you. See, Christians think when they go through something, that there's something strange happening to them. <clears throat> We're supposed to expect it. Instead, listen what it says. Be very glad. For these trials make you partners with Christ in his suffering so that you will have a wonderful joy <clears throat> of seeing his glory when it is revealed to the whole world. So we what? Suffer with him and for him. I know I do. Laurie, do you suffer? Brittany? Mary? Olius? Do you suffer for Jesus? This is not our permanent home. Everybody wants to enjoy their life down here <clears throat> when we're supposed to be getting ready for our life up there. Yes. Preparing for eternity. I guess people just don't get it. I teach it enough. You know? I guess it goes in one ear and out the other. No, it huh? It takes this kind of work for us to take root. For it to take root. But as everybody says, well, I don't really need that. Hmm. Yeah, we need to be reminded. Yeah, we all need it. Yeah, we all need this. <laughs> the whole world needs this. It's called P-R-I-D-E. That says they don't need this. You know who doesn't need this? The devil. Well, everybody thinks, well, this group is just for drugs and alcohol. No, this group is for sin. Amen. This is sin is anonymous. Amen. And if there's anybody in the church that doesn't sin, well, I guess they don't need this. But everybody in the church does sin, so I guess they all need it. Amen. The thing of it is, we all need it, but not all of us want it. Some people don't think they sin. You're right. Some people really don't think they <laughs> sin. <clears throat> no, they really do. No. You hear it. I'm a good person. I, I don't... They don't even understand what sin is. Really. I don't sin. I'm a good person. I like everybody. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. <laughs> and then you woke up. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. There's some people that think when you tell people that wretched sinners, I'm, I'm, I'm offended by you saying that. I'm, <clears throat> I'm offended by that. I'm not a sinner. Who, who were offended by that? The Pharisees. Right. Worry's a sin. <clears throat> you worry about things? That's a sin. Anger, anger gives a foothold to the devil. Anger, uh, inappropriate anger is a sin. But I don't, I never get angry. <laughs> right? And I never worry about anything. <clears throat> I'm never anxious. That's what it says. Be not, be anxious and sin not. We're all exactly. We're all made of the same stuff. We all have the devil puts all these spirits inside of us. Fear, doubt. Oh, I, I never doubted. I never doubt God at all. Ever. It's not a sin. I don't have any fear in me. None. None. I'm perfect. So let's just close up and go home. Why even go to church anymore? <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm getting, my water. I'm getting choked up here. I'm getting choked up here. It's a joke. It is. Christianity is becoming a joke. Wait a minute. I'm not a sinner. Well, then why do you need a Savior? Why do you need Jesus if you're not a sinner? Maybe I'm going to have to teach on that a little bit, huh? They, want their own. <laughs> they got their own Jesus, that's right. <clears throat> I do just fine here. I'm good. They get mad at, get mad at me, I know. Don't you call me a sinner. I said, I'm not calling you a sinner. God is. God's calling you a sinner. I'm just, I'm just a spokesperson for God. Don't get mad at me because you don't like what's coming out of the Bible. Your problem was with God, not with me. <laughs> Guess who's the boss? God's the boss. That's right. Jesus is the boss. I don't want anybody to tell me what to do. <laughs> well, I guess then you're God then. <laughs> All right. Suffering for being a Christian. Look at it says, dear friends, don't be surprised at the fiery trials you're going through as if something strange were happening to you. Instead, be very glad for these trials make you partners with Christ in his suffering so that you will have a wonderful joy in seeing his glory when it's revealed to the whole world. So be happy when you are insulted for being a Christian. It's a compliment when they call you a Jesus freak or a Bible thumper because that's what they see. You see? If they see that, that's good. If they don't see that, is when you have to worry. Because when they see the when they see somebody that doesn't like Jesus or the Bible, they won't can't tell the difference between a believer and an unbeliever. So at least if they know that you love Jesus, that's a compliment. Because it's coming, it's the fruit is showing outwardly. Look what it says, for then the glorious spirit of God rests upon you. If you suffer, however, it must not be for murder, stealing, making trouble, or prying into other people's affairs. But it's no shame to suffer for being a Christian. Praise God for the privilege of being called by his name, for the time has come for judgment. Listen to this now. Listen up. The time has come for judgment, and it must begin in God's house. Do you realize before the unbelieving world gets judged, the church gets judged first? <sighs> Woo! And let me tell you something. God's going to be harder on the church than he is with the unbelievers because the believers in the church know God and know what he wants them to do. People don't have any fear of God. That's the problem anymore. They think God's dead. They do.
for the time must come for judgment and if the judgment begins with us what terrible fate awaits those who never obey God's good news and also if the righteous are barely saved what will happen to godless sinners so we're just gonna make it out of here we're just making it out so if you're listen what it says now if you're in a if you're suffering in a manner that pleases God keep on doing what is right and trust your life to the God who created you. For he will never fail you. So you just keep doing the right thing no matter whether people agree with you or not. Because you're not going to get the masses to agree with Christian things. As a matter of fact, they want to take this out. But we have to stand strong in our faith. You see, America is, is not really strong in their faith. Trust me. They're gonna, you know how many people are going to take the mock? You don't even forget it. They don't even, they're not even taught this stuff that they got to suffer. They don't even know what it's like to suffer. People are getting their heads cut off and killed for Jesus' name. Uh, they think they're going to suffer if what? They, they, they lock the door. 